Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video I want to answer a question. You know how the game works. You ask questions on the forum and if I can I try to answer with the video. Now the video today is kind of interesting because uh, uh, Keenan asked the question about adding an opening balance row to a matrix. So he has a table that contains uh, dates and amounts and the amounts need to be summed up. It might be expenses or cost or values like those. And if he makes a selection on the date, he wants a new row to appear with the opening balance. Uh, it's kind of an interesting question. So let's start by reading the question, then we reason a bit on top of it, and then hopefully we get some solution. Let's get started. As always, let's start by looking at the question. Now, the article is a semi-additive measures index, and the topic is about semi-additive measures, so the question this time makes a lot of sense in the article, and we have several questions. Here we have Keenan. Okay, let me see if we can see everything. Perfect. Now, this is <clears throat> Keenan's question. Hello, SQL BI, thanks. I have this case. In a Power BI dashboard, we have a date slicer and a cash flow statement that contains date and amount. When we slice using the date, that's a first important thing. Only when there is a filter over the date, we want a new row to be added to the statement, calculating all the previous date's amount as an opening balance. And that is important to add it to the same amount column, though we still get the same closing balance. Uh, can you help on this? Sure, I can, and that's a kind of bit tricky because uh, uh, if you think about that, what we want to do is add a new row. Now, what you show on the rows and on the columns of a matrix uh, is data that needs to be in some table. So it's not just about creating a measure that returns a number. We actually need to change the model in order to create a new row that contains the opening balance. Because if you only slice by date, date contains January, February, March, contains individual dates, but it's nothing like an opening balance. So we will need to extend the date table with a dummy date that will contain the opening balance. So then we intercept when the opening balance is visible, and finally we show some value there. The thing is, uh, we, we probably need uh, to duplicate the date dimension, because you want to apply a filter with a slicer. Uh, I think the best thing that we can do is let's open Power BI and let's start building the structure together. So uh, let's close the window and we have uh, here our usual Contoso model that contains a customer, product, sales, a date and store. We have the date table. Now, if we take a look at the date table, date contains uh, dates, uh, date, year, quarter, and all the attributes of the date table. And what we want to happen is uh, not slice by brand. Let me slice by, um, instead of brand, we can use the year month. Let's get rid of this. Uh, we have May, June, July 2017 with the sales amount. And the requirement is that if I select, let's say 2019, I want to see here as a first row the opening balance with whatever is the sum of all the values before the beginning of January 2019. But the column that I'm showing here is the year month, and the year month in the date table does not contain opening balance. So we need to extend the content of this table so that we do have open balance as one of the possible values. But the problem we are going to face is that we have a slicer that is filtering a specific year. Now, if you are filtering 2019, let's pretend that we create a new row in the date table that contains opening balance and a dummy date. As soon as you filter 2019, that filter will completely hide our dummy row. So we need to create a new table that contains the dummy rows, all the dates, and then build a suitable set of relationships so to make it work. And let's do that. The best thing that we can do is just copy the date table and then union it with a new row that contains everything. But 
if you look at the day table, there are just too many columns and I'm lazy. I don't want to write uh, uh, opening balance everywhere. So the first thing that we do is let's get rid of some columns, uh, transform data. So we open Power Query. Where are you, Power Query? Here you are. Let's check the date. And uh, the date is cool, the year, the year quarter. I'm not interested in the quarter, so we get rid of them. We keep year and month. I don't want the short version. <clears throat> Let's keep the month. I don't want the short version of the month. We can probably get rid of everything here. No. We need to keep the month number, then day or week, all the other columns, uh, they can go away. Now, the purpose of this step is only to reduce the number of columns in the day table. You will probably not do that in production, but as I said, I'm lazy and I don't want to build a table that contains uh, all those columns. So now we have a shortened version of the day table and we can create a new table. Let's call it uh, balance data because it contains uh, the opening balance and then all the values. And we provide the default value for everything, but instead of the year month, we use opening balance as a name. So we go, where are you, new table here. Let's call it with a bigger font, balance date, that contains all no blank row of date that just contains the date table and then we need to add a new row. So we do a union with a new table that contains a zero for the date, zero for the year, open, <coughs> do I call opening balance? I don't remember, open balance, open balance for the year month, zero for the year month number, open balance again for the month, zero for the month number, and the end of month column, we are gonna kill it. Uh, let's use, no, let's just kill it. I forgot to remove this end of month column that I need to remove from the date table. Oh, because that was a calculated column. Let, let's kill it. And then we can go on balance date. Now it computes the value correctly. And let me just sort it ascending. Now you see that we do have here our row that contains open balance for the year month, open balance for the month. Now the row right now is there in the table, but it's not going to filter anything. Because if I get rid of the year month from the date, and I use the year month from the balance date, since I didn't set any relationship, let's place year month on the rows. You see that it shows the value, the same value everywhere. And besides, it doesn't even sort the data correctly. So let's do that immediately. We sort it by month number. So now we have uh, the first row that is open balance. And let's do that for the month too. Because year month, uh, Sorry, year month is sorted by year month number and month needs to be sorted by month number. Okay, so I show open balance as the first I ever wrote in January, February, March, April, and so on. Now we need to set up the relationship the proper way. We do have our balance date table here. And let's try to think about what kind of relationship we can create. If I build the relationship between balance date and sales, uh, that is not going to show anything because there will be no row in sales that contains the balance date. So there it's likely the optimizer is gonna to create us issues because uh, uh, it will never show the value, uh, the, the value that we created. So probably the best thing that we can do is create the relationship between balance date and date. So we do that and by default it created a one-to-one -one bidirectional relationship. That's not what I want. I want balance data to filter data. So I will have a filter over data that is coming from the slicer and also a filter coming from balance date. 
Uh, so this relationship need to have balance date on the many side. Now balance date is the second, so this is a one to many. No, that's the opposite. It's a many to one and unidirectional. Let me check it. So one and then many, therefore a filter over balance date will reach date. And then I use balance date to place the filter. So now I have the sales, uh, let's get rid of this from May, 2017. If I, and I'm, that's already working. I'm slicing by balance date and I have May, 2017 and all the other values. So you see that there is no opening uh, balance here. And the reason is quite simple. Open balance is part of balance date, but the value of the sales amount for open balance is black because there are no sales with the dummy date. So what we need to do is write a measure that intercepts the moment when the engine is scanning open balance and computes the sales amount before the minimum date. So we have sales amount. Uh, we can actually, no, let's make a new measure. Uh, let's get rid of sales amount. Now you see open balance appears because now it's blank everywhere. And we can start creating a new measure. Let's call it sales with a balance. And we start just computing. Uh, we start computing sales amount. Uh, sales amount is just the sales amount return sales amount. It is not doing, going to compute anything fancy, but it's just to have a measure that we place in the report because then we will need to start changing it. Right now the behavior, uh, let me do this way so we have more a bit more real estate and we can also get rid of this part. Okay, where is my measure? Sales with balance. Let's focus on the algorithm. Well, first of all, we need to understand when we are in the special row that we added containing the open balance. So we can retrieve the current value of the year month column or, or the month column. So we can retrieve a, a current month which is the selected value of a balance date. Let's use the, the month. Let me retrieve the current month. As I always do, I debug measures of one variable at a time just to make sure that the numbers are correct and what I'm computing is correct. Now you see that open balance appears because sales with balance, the measure projected in the matrix is actually showing uh, some result. And if I place a filter over the year, nothing changes because sales with balance always returns a value. But now we have in current month, the current value of the month. We compute the sales amount and then we can try to compute the result immediately with something like if current month is open balance. Let me return a hundred just to make sure that something happens. Otherwise we retrieve the sales amount. And let's see what happens. If I return the result, now it's computing some value. It destroyed the formatting, but we make it appear again. And here we have, you see that we have the row with open balance that shows a hundred and then the sales with balance. And whatever I do with the filter over the year, the filter over the year is filtering the date. So it's blanking out all the other values, but it is still keeping the row for open balance because there we are showing a value that does not depend on the date. Uh, now we need to compute something more interesting in sales with balance. So we need to compute the sales before the first day that we are showing. So we need the variable first date, which is just, uh, first date is likely to be a keyword, um, date start is the minimum of date date. 
and but it's actually not correct because uh, let me show you what retrieves a date start dates a date start if I do that this way, date start returns uh, the the date the starting date in the current selection. So January, February, March, April, and so on. That's not what I want. So I want to do calculate the minimum of day data all selected. So we retrieve the minimum data in the entire selection considering the slicer. And now we have the 1st of January 2019. If I go for 2020, it's the 1st of January 2020. If I have no filters, it's the 1st of January 2017. So that is uh, good. We have the date start. We need to compute the sales. Uh, let's call it open balance. And we use calculate. The sales amount where date date is less or equal less or equal strictly less because we do not want the first date uh, then the date start no date start so that is our open balance and we can retrieve it here open balance Let's see if it works. It should actually, because uh, we are detecting if it's an open balance, the open balance, otherwise the sales amount. The formatting is probably, go oh, we do not need to, retrie to return a date start. We want to return result. And then we format it again. Uh, let's see how it works. If I don't select anything, it doesn't show anything. And the reason why it's not showing anything is because uh, it is, uh, well, there are no sales before the very beginning of the time, so that measure is blank. But if I select 2018, it shows an open balance of 3 million uh, and a total of 4.9 million. Uh, let's start looking at the total. If I just select 2017, we have 3 millions at the end of 2017, which happens to be the total shown for the open balance. So that's a very good step in the right direction. 2019, that should be 3 millions plus 4.9, that's around 8 million. And that shows 8 million. I guess the numbers are right. We will check them later because uh, this solves uh, the first problem. So we are now showing the open balance as a new row. We added the row using union and the calculated table. Then we set the relationships the right way. And we intercepted when the selection happens on the open balance. And when that happens, we compute the open balance. Still, uh, if you remember the question, there was also the problem of showing the total the right way. And the totals are not right right now. Because if I look at 2018, we start with 3 million. So if you quickly sum those numbers, it cannot be just 4, 9 million. That number should be much larger. And the reason is we are not computing, uh, we are not considering the open balance. Open balance has been placed there by our code, but it's not considered in the calculation because the calculation just shows the total of 2018 because of the filter, but open balance is not part of the calculation. So we need to inject the open balance in the code. And the problem is we need to understand when we are at the grand total. Now, how do we discover that we are at the grand total? We can actually do something simple with easing scope that is likely to be that simple. Uh, let's create a variable is a grand total. I can use is in scope balance date year month number. And then if the current month is open balance, then we show the open balance. Otherwise, if we are at the grand total, let's show a hundred. Otherwise we show the sales amount. 
as I did before, I just use a number just to check that my if is working right. When I'm happy with that, I will do the calculation. And uh, it is not working. You see that it shows 100 everywhere except where it should. So I probably need a not somewhere. Indeed, that is not, is in scope. Now the behavior is much better. It shows the sales with balance. It shows the individual values and a hundred. I just need to compute that hundred. And if you think about that, that hundred is nothing but the sales amount that I already computed plus the open balance. So that is the sales amount plus the open balance. And let's see if it works. If we start in 2017, it gives a total of 3 millions. Then I expect 2018 to start with 3 millions and reach 8 millions, which is way better because I bet that the sum of all this stuff is 8 million. And this number should be visible in 2019. 8 million, that goes to 11 million. And 2020 starts with 11 million and finishes with 12 millions. Now that works and it's pretty cool, but I'm not entirely sure about this part about the grand total because I'm checking easy scope over the balance date year month. But what happens if my user gets rid of the year month and for example uses just the month on the rows and the year on the rows, we do have the open balance. Ah, well, actually, if they use the year and then the month, that is not really cool. Because we are showing, yeah, we are actually showing zero and then we are showing the sales, sales with balance happens for all the years, regardless of what we do here. And that's a unfortunate side effect that we cannot easily remove. So let's go for the month number or whatever column, but that should be a, a very, no, not month number, the year month, uh, a clearly identified column. So I can use that. If you have a year month, short year month, um, anyway, it's worth uh, looking at this change because uh, instead of using is in scope, um, what we could do to check the grand total is to check that um, the number of rows in date is the same uh, hey, is the same as calculate uh, count row count rows of date all selected. That checks is a bit better because that checks if um, all the dates are currently visible regardless of what I'm using to do the slicing. Uh, so this is a bit slower, but also a bit safer from the point of view of uh, the measure. And that's it. We have the open balance. We have all the values. Uh, the closing balance uh, is correct. Uh, we are computing both uh, the opening balance, if there's any, and uh, the total balance. So, as you have seen, uh, solving the problem was, uh, well, that was not entirely simple because we had to tweak the model a bit, create a new table. Creating the new table is important because uh, if you try to solve the problem just by using the date table, you will be in trouble because uh, the slicer will get rid of uh, the additional row that you want to add to the date table. Uh, so. You create a new date table containing the balances and then you use the slicer to filter the date, not the balance date, but the date. But you use the balance date on the rows of uh, the matrix uh, in order to uh, have the open, opening balance row visible at the very beginning. And then it's a matter of writing some DAX code, intercepting the row on which you are and performing the basic calculation to solve the problem. Enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.